were to visit Ricardo at his school today, you'll find that he's always ready to greet you with a smile and a tight hug around your waist. But it hasn't always been that way. Rewind a few years back and you'll find a tiny, sick little boy who could barely lift his head off his school desk. Out of over 2,000 students in the Mission Possible schools in Haiti, Ricardo's small stature and sickly demeanor caught the attention of several different Americans who were traveling on separate teams. Once the medical team could get down to meet him, it was easy to see why. At three and a half years old, Ricardo was significantly smaller than his classmates, weighing only 25 pounds. Thus began our journey with Ricardo. It's not uncommon for kids in Haiti to grow up without a father, which was the case for Ricardo and his two siblings. His father was abusive, often leaving his mother with visible bruises, and eventually he kicked the four of them out of the home, leaving them homeless with nothing but the clothes on their backs. When we visited Ricardo in the home that his mother found for them, it was evident that his mother was trying her best to provide for her children with the very limited resources that she had. Their home was a modest one-room structure, and they shared one plate, one fork, and one spoon between the four of them. They slept on the dirt floor alongside the bugs and rats that crawled around them during the night. Although Ricardo's mother desired to give her children more, she had no means to do so. The story doesn't end there, though. Through the next months and years, our journey with Ricardo and his family, we learned more about them and invested time and resources into getting him healthy. Peanut butter is a great source of nutrients, so it was arranged for Ricardo to eat three tablespoons of it every day. HIV was a real possibility, but after being tested at the local clinic, we were able to rule it out. His hemoglobin was also being closely monitored. When the results all came back, as we expected, we began looking more closely at the root of the problem. He was not eating enough food or taking in enough calories to allow him to grow or to thrive. It was easy to fall in love with Ricardo and his family. They're just like you and I. Pastor Hervé arranged to have beds built for them to sleep in and found a new, safer home for them. Ricardo's mother was more than willing to work, but she could not find a job. So with some training, we hired her to sew feminine hygiene pads for our female students. With the income that she was receiving, she was able to purchase food and feed her children. Fast forward to today, and you'll find a little boy who runs and plays with his friends, actively participates in school, and is gaining weight. You will find a mother who beams with pride because she is able to work and provide for her children. You will find a family invested in the local church and actively walking with Jesus Christ. During the early days of our journey with Ricardo, he went home from school and told his mama, Mama, there are some white women who love me. Indeed, that is true. Jesus commands his disciples to love our neighbors as ourselves, and that includes a little boy living down a dirt path in a country across the ocean. One by one, we can change the lives of children, families, and future generations, beginning with Ricardo.